There we go. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker. Out on a glorious morning on the boat. Look at that. The sun has just come up. Down in my area, that happens at about quarter to five in the morning. So yeah, an early start. When the setting's like this though, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Today we're going to try for an early season shark. I'll explain the rigs and the tackle and all that as I'm doing it. Just wish me luck. Different day out here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, today's a seasick weather day. It's a very sloppy day out here. But I've made it. I've got where I'm going. I am right out. Right out at sea. 96.9, 97 metres of water. So yeah. I'm going to really quickly get myself all set up. See if I can't get a couple of white in his bait. And I'll catch you back when I'm ready to start fishing. Yeah. Let's get everything sorted. Right, we've managed to get the first hook bait aboard. All I'm doing is I'm fishing with baited feathers on the on the seabed. I've got a set of baited ock eyes. We are currently 98 metres of water. I've got like a, a 12 or 14 ounce lead, so it's dragging along the bottom. <laughs> the key, I feel, to a successful dead shark fishing is your chum slick, your chum. Now what I have is I have, I have a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how I make my chum. I have frozen blocks of chum, like that. And I suspend them over the side inside of a laundry sack. I double up your sacks, keep them in a bucket, depending on what you You just need to keep an eye on it because sharks sometimes they'll be sneaky and they'll come up underneath the boat and bite the bag and then it breaks open. Yeah, so keep an eye on it. My shark traces come in two parts. I have a trace body that incorporates a lead and I have a hook length. I also have a video showing you how I make my shark traces and I'm going to great depth about explaining why I've made them in the way that I have. I have detachable hook lengths. You see with most of my traces. I'm sorry, there are prob probably people that are going to complain about feeling seasick today watching today's video. It is a sloppy day out here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to knock up a trace, put a bait on and I'll show you all before I feed it off. <laughs> a little tip. I put the net bag inside of a bucket and then knock out the chum inside the bucket, like that. <laughs> Don't start scooping it out on the deck because you end up with bits of bran and bits of oil and bits of fish all over the deck and it's slippery and yeah, inside the bucket like that. My first setup is a Conflict Offshore Tuna Casting Rod and a Spinfisher Live Liner and this is a 6500. I like the Live Liner function for this it allows me to be able to set it so it's running like on a ratchet with no drag and as soon as I wind the handle I'm at full drag. I have a large sliding float on there and I've just flapped off a pouty. It's not the whiting that I was after I don't know if you can see the glassy slick that's running off there. I'll run this a distance away from the boat, set it on the ratchet and then see if I can't find a few more hook baits. <laughs> it's, no, it's no good if I haven't got any bait. Go. See about catching some whiting now. The crazy thing is, is the, on, <laughs> the camera is on a gimbal. It has got stabilisation. So however rocky you think it is there, it's worse here. <laughs> That's perfect. Perfect size. 
Yeah, I'm happy about that. I'll get half a dozen of them, I'll be laughing. I think we have a slack liner. Yep. Yeah, there's a shark. That, that fish picked up the bait and ran towards me. I know because the float, instead of the float going down, the float came up in the water. Okay. Yeah, instead of hearing it, instead of hearing the drag or instead of seeing the float, Bob under, the floor, instead of sitting like that, just laid flat. And I thought, mm. that just means that the weight, the weight on the trace and the weight of the trace had been lifted up, had come up in the water. When that happens, like you saw, all I did there, I just wound down really quick until I found the fish and then lifted into it. You don't set the hook when you're fishing with circle hooks. You don't strike it, you just lift into it. Where are we? Looks like we're about 30 meters below the boat. What you need to be sure of before you start even putting baits out is you need to make sure you have everything that you need right to hand because you could be locked into a fight here with a, a hundred a 200 pound fish that goes on for an hour and you haven't got the luxury of, <laughs> of messing about to find all your gear yeah, this doesn't feel like a big fish but I'm just glad to get the first one. <laughs> first one of the season. Oh, it's not a bad one. Yeah, it's not a bad fish, it'll be 40 pound. That chum bag will pop the way. is fighting by the boat this guy no he's not done yet you can see when they're ready because they kind of come up they come up on their side this guy here he's still digging he's still trying to get down what I'm gonna have to do in a second I'm going to have to put the rod down and get hold of the trace. When you do that, you need to back the drag off the reel. Because if the fish decides it wants to go for a dive, and you've got a tight drag, it'll just... and it can snap the end of the rod. This one is hooked perfectly at the side of the jaw. All you need to do, take your T-bar, go down the bend of the hook, there you go. Just like that. <laughs> So the first shark of the season, brilliant. Thanks for that. There we are, it was all, that's all it was, it was a, I think these are 14 -0. Cooks and Roll Mutsu Circles in 14 -0. And you can see I've crushed the barb down. That's to allow easy unhooking. 
I have got a couple of Muppets on here. I do like Muppets on my traces. I'm going to slide them back up. There you are. Come back, back out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rig a camera on the side of the boat now to see if you can see them fish. But yeah, the reason why I pulled the chum bag, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the fish thrashing around. If it gets hold of the bag and it wraps up in it, it's, it's just a mad. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, that fish I put it down, it was, it was about 40 pound. I will, um, hopefully, we'll get to show you something bigger. Let's get another bait out. Uh, all I've done is flap it off one of the whiting. And without sticking the hook in my hand, you just pass it up through the hardest part of the head. Like that. Run it back out. Yeah, I should have maybe explained. Two types of bites you're looking for. One of them you cannot miss. It is a screamer. As in the rod, the rod hoops over, the float goes down and line peels off the reel. That is a positive bite. The other type of bite that you get was like that. And it was a negative bite being it. It was, of course anglers will know it as a drop back bite. Your float, instead of sitting up, lays on the surface. And that means that the fish has picked up the bait, the weight, and is running towards you or is coming up in the water. In that case, you need to be on the ball, you need to be watching. So wind down as quick as you can to find the fish, set the hook, play it away. I do, I do really enjoy fishing with fixed poles. Because uh, you've got maximum sport, and this is a, I think this is a 100 gram rod. Perfect. Light balance set up, maximum funkers. <laughs> oh, bless me. Two sharks. Oh, there's the bait rod going. These sharks, some of them might only be 10, 15 pound. If you're bringing them in on 50 pound gear, you just drag them to the boat. Whereas the fish are light, light balance set up like this. You can handle the big fish, but even the small ones are a lot of fun. That's two nice waiting. When we're drifting along like this, you can, you can sometimes see the sharks. I mean, we've got a little bit of motion in the ocean today, so, Every now and again, when you'll see a wave, you'll see them swimming down the wave towards you. Because this chum slick, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. But where the floats are here, and running up that way. What happens is, this, this slick of oil, this slick of fish oil that I've put out. Sharks will be swimming about, they swim about anywhere in the water. As this chum slick and all these particles leave the boat at this sink, so it'll be covering an area like that, as it gets deeper, as it goes further away. Any sharks swimming around, they'll come into this, this channel of scent and then follow it. Follow it all the way to my bait. So my furthest bait is deeper than my nearer bait. Sometimes you'll see them and they'll come in and you'll see them like meandering. If this is your chum slick like this, you'll see them meandering like that as they smell it, lose it, smell it, lose it, all the way to the boat. Some of them even you'll see, they'll swim past you and you'll see that they'll lose it and they'll come back and find you. Those are the ones you've got to watch out for coming up underneath the boat and biting the chum bag. But sometimes they're really inquisitive as well. <laughs> sometimes annoyingly so. You'll see them sometimes come up and start nosing the float, use their nose and bat the float around, or bat it with their tail. I'm going to put my sunglasses on them, a pair of polarised lenses. It's good for uh, good for picking out the fish. I mean, you can see it. I don't know well you could see that one, but the water's quite turquoise. I mean, there's quite a lot of plankton still in, which is why I, I, it is a little bit early for sharks because they don't really like it when there's too much plankton in the water. Yeah, that 
that shark there straight out a mile. Real, well, just a real vivid, vivid blue. I love them. I love fishing for sharks. Incredible, incredible creatures. For anybody who's watching this, I was there, uh, I was potentially watching this from abroad. The uh, shark fishing in the UK is catch and release. They are an in incredibly important part of the ecosystem. Um, a lot of <laughs> a lot of the uh, the information that the scientists have got about blue sharks in the UK has been information gathered by anglers like myself. What I'll do is I'll I'll write down a rough estimation of what I've caught, where I've caught them, send them away so that they can get some idea of the bio stock. See if the numbers are going up, going down, whether I'm also quite often is you'll find sometimes that they'll have like long line hooks stuck in their throats. Quite a few of them that I had last year had real big hooks stuck in them, so I brought them aboard, took the old hooks out of them and let them go. Got a shark coming in across the surface. Just saw it, and you know, like I said, when a wave lifts up like that and you can see it, just like a dark blue torpedo coming straight for the boat. I don't know how far you can see, but it was just by the furthest float. So fingers crossed, any minute now we'll have a bite. Yeah, it's up there. It's batting the furthest float. I don't know if you can see it, the yellow float at the back. Just hit it with its tail. See if I can get him right down here, but he's, he's cutting about left and right. Like I said, you know, in the slick. He's about maybe... Shark. Different one. You still there, are you? Yep. There we go. And we've got the second shark still in the slick. <laughs> yeah, you'll, f you'll find that sometimes, that by just having a shark in the slick, this feels like a better fish. Yeah, this feels like a better shark, this one. That little shark there, just by having him in the slick, sometimes it can spur other fish on because it's just competition. God, I'll tell you what. This does feel like a better fish. Uh, getting fish competing against each other. As soon as this other shark come into the slick, it will have known that other one was there. That other little one. So it thought, oh, I better go on this bait sharpish before he gets it. The worrying thing now is as I still have that little shark somewhere around the boat, I don't know where he is, is while my line here is under tension and I'm bringing this other fish in, if that little shark swims into this line, it can, it can cut it with its teeth, it can cut it with its skin. This line under tension snaps really easy if it comes against something abrasive. This shark is actually pulling us. We were going in that direction. We're now going in that direction. <laughs> I can tell because the chum slick goes whoosh, and then takes like a right angle. How much battery you got left? Ooh. Whoop. Put a shark on this rod now as well. 
Shark's just picked up that other float. I'm going to have to get this guy unhooked sharpish. But this is a big fish, this. I haven't got time for messing around. Yeah, this is a... Not be an 80 pound fish, that. Easy 80 pound. These are good ones. That is a big fish, that. Look at them teeth there. That fish was a big fish that. I hope you got to see that fish. The battery is about to die and I'm just playing this one. See if I can't swap the batteries over real quick while I'm playing this shark. <laughs> it all happens at once, doesn't it? But aye, that was a big fish that. That was a that was an 80 pound plus fish. This one feels like that small one that was around somewhere. How I haven't lost this fish change in that battery, I have no idea. God, that was crazy. Let this be a lesson. If you have the opportunity to change your battery, change your battery. It's not the little one. This is another 50 pound fish, this. Take my sunglasses off before I lose them on that side. That one, I unhooked it and rehooked it like three times. <sighs> right, first things first. Re-establish that chunk. We've completely lost that chum slick. Chum slick, I can see where it finishes. About maybe 60 yards up there. But yeah, double hook up. That one was about 40. The other one was a lot bigger. Try and get things going again. Get a bit of fish oil on the go. Yeah, that was crackers. Let's get two more hook baits out. I might change. Them two sharks can. Them two sharks can bang on when the tide turns. So now that the tide's running a little bit more. Get some more fish baits out, see if we can't catch some more. I love it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the baits I've been putting out, I just, to start with, I just put out what I had. But with the sharks, the deeper shark, the deeper, sorry, the deeper bait, the sharks that have been coming out and that have been the bigger sharks. They've been taking bigger baits. The littler ones that have been kind of like just mulling around the boat I've been throwing little tiny offerings to them just like little tiny scraps that are like this big and I've been chewing them up so what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm putting a bigger bait deep and I'm putting a smaller bait shallow that's that's not a hard and fast rule that just seems to be like the, the smaller ones the one up by the surface they're being real finicky the other ones I've never seen them Every shark that we've hooked so far today, we haven't seen it yet, we've just had the bite. We haven't seen anything for a while, so putting a fresh bag of chum out.
Yeah, that period of time when we were dealing with them fish and I had the chum bag aboard and we had that break in the chum slick, I think it's cost us. You want to have one long continuous slick and now ours has got a break in it of about 100 yards. Swell's dropped right off though, hasn't it? Now that we've got wind and tide together, yeah, it's lovely. Might even get the bottom rod out. Rig up, um, rig up a hook length. In the time it takes me to rig one up, if we haven't had a shark come on, I might put a bait down on the bottom. Not what I'm after. It's a nice size waiting, but not what I'm after. They're always so flipping greedy. Oh, shark. There's a shark. Oh, yes. That's a better fish. <laughs> I'd literally just rigged up that little bait to go on the bottom. Rigged up that little bait to go on the bottom in the hope of catching like a nice gurnard or maybe a megrim or something like that. The second that he hit the seabed, do -do 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 -do, whiten. Coming towards me. There he is. It's not so bad. I'm trying to keep him away from that other line. Very nice fish. It's not ready. Doing most of his scrapping by the boat, this guy. Come on, unwrap yourself. Stamp a fish today. Get another bait run out. That fresh chum bag seems to have done the trick. Now all I've done is I've just cut little pieces. The baits that I brought in. Like this, this is this is the last bait what I brought in. That whiting has been well you can see the shark's teeth marks in it there, look. That, you can't use that as a hook bait again, it's just completely destroyed. I'll just cut it into little tiny pieces like this. And throw them in as free offerings. Just every 20-30 seconds, chuck a couple in. Because if there's a finicky shark there, there's one there that's been a little bit finicky. Them little offerings can get him like, um, 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 and then when he sees a bit, I'm like, oh, I'll have that as well. Yeah, having one in the slick is a good thing. Even if it's just a little one and it's just swimming around, it's a good thing. One of the signs to look for if you can't see the sharks, I mean, the, the clarity today is not great because of, of the plankton in the water. Unless they're in like the top five, six feet of the water, I can't see them. But the seagulls can. I don't know how they, there's one there at the back of the slick. 
right at the back of the slick. Uh, it doesn't look like a bad fish actually. Again, all it's doing is it's just coming in the, along the boat. But the seagulls there, they somehow they know they're there. I don't know how they know them, but they know. I guess if I was living on top of the water, <laughs> I would learn quickly when there was a shark around. But yeah, if you've got sharks in them in your slick, usually you'll have fulmers and petrels and seagulls all pecking about in all the little bits of your trunk. They won't land anywhere near me. That one there is at full distance. Even when I'm chucking these little pieces in, he's, he doesn't want to be anywhere near me. He knows there's a shark somewhere. I don't know why well, you won't be able to see because it's like a speck in the camera now, but he's all like beady. You know, like when they just sat there and they're kind of like, they don't, care, they don't have a care in the world. He's on alert. There's that shark coming in. I might try and do some shark swimming this year. Because <laughs> shark fishing isn't dangerous enough. I might try shark swimming. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. He's mm, dropping down on this bit actually. What are you going to do? You're going to take it? You're going to take it? I like the conditions, you know, like earlier today when we come out and there was a bit of swell. I like those conditions for sharking. Because the floats up and down in the waves, I feel like it agitates the baits more, as if the baits flutter about. I mean, you still pick them up when it's flat calm, but my personal preference is when there's a little bit of... Oh, ooh, no. A little bit of excitement. You know, like the water's... Water's got something about it. Well, my bottom bait has found something other than a whiting. <laughs> it's found a red pin cushion. Full of pins. A lovely, spiky, little red gurnard. I do love catching these. They are just stunning, aren't they? I don't know how well you're going to see it on the camera, but they have an incredibly vivid blue eye. But just covered in spines. Yeah, these little these little legs here, they walk about on the seabed on them. They have no trouble with going up and down. Some fish, like whiting and pouting and pollock, suffer really bad with barotrauma. Gurnage don't. Swim straight to the surface and straight back down again. Yeah, all I'm fishing here is I'm just fishing a really simple running ledger rig. Just, what's that? Four foot of 15 pound fluoro with a 2 oh straight J and about a pound and a half of lead. <laughs> just seeing what else is down there. Never know, there might be a megrim, there might be... There might be a gurnard, there might be a cuckoo raid, but most likely you're going to find dogfish and <laughs> whiting. Yeah. Hopefully, when I mean, we're drifting quite fast now, we're drifting 2.3 knots. It should be too fast for the doggies, but I've jinxed myself now, haven't I? Oh. He knows he's hooked now. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, now he knows he's hooked. There we go. Now he's waking up a bit. It was almost as if he was thinking, what's going on here? Didn't properly know he was hooked. Oh, I'm out of shape. <laughs> I've had it easy all winter, I'm out of shape. I need to start working on my cardio a bit more. <laughs> Thank you. 
Come on, up you come. Come on, up you come. Ah, you're quite finished. <laughs> Another cracking fish, that. That was a good solid 60 pound fish. <laughs> yes, but I, I am out of shape. <laughs> there's summer going on. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's summer going on. I was busy doing something on this side of the boat, and all of a sudden, I just had to get swoosh, turned around, and it was like a proper splash. <laughs> But it wasn't a dolphin, I don't know what it was. Oh, the seagull's taken off as well. <laughs> Could have been anything. But yeah, that was... Um, I heard it, I heard, I heard like it break the water and as soon as I turned around it was just like a big... Psh Who knows? Who knows? Any look and it was a massive shark and he's making its way for one of my baits. Shark on. I was actually just running out the other bait. Oh no, he's picked up two baits. No. I'm just running this bait out. And I think this shark has picked up the other bait as well. Just running one bait out, and it <laughs> the further bait just got past this this near side one, and the near side one went down, and then the other one went down. So I'm not sure if he's managed to wrap up in one, or if he's actually got both baits. Yeah, I think we've been lucky. Another nice blue though. Another lovely blue. Another lovely blue shark. Right, when you're using a T-bar, all you do is go down the bend of the hook, turn it, pop it out. Pop it out. Brilliant. Always happens, doesn't it? I'd literally, <laughs> I'd just changed one bait. I brought the other one in, just changed it. Just running it out. Just when the two floats got next to each other. Poof. But yeah, luckily all it had done, 
was he'd wrapped around one trace and he unwrapped himself. That's another really good fish, that. Yeah, what a real good stamp of fish today. Still don't know what that big splash was. I hope, I hope this camera that I've got rigged up on the side of the boat, I hope it's showing you some decent footage because it's hard to, it's hard to do everything solo. Float down, two floats down. Oh no! And this one's got a shark one as well. Has it or has it just picked up the line? No, it's just picked up the line. Oh, I'm in trouble. Can't see which round it goes. What a drama that was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly the same as before. Just changing the baits out, just running one bait back. And it went down right next to the other one. So I ended up all wrapped round, nip one, pearl one, do -si do <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, that's fantastic. Don't even know how many sharks I've had now. I have got two more hook baits left. I'm gonna run those two out. If I catch anything else, I'll put it in. If I don't, then I won't. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. Um, all the very best. <laughs> we'll see you later.